So I got uh, Alex from Mainly Media down here at the Cranky Motorsports Base Camp. I'm recording him, recording me. He's mic'd, or I'm mic'd on his camera, and I'm just using my phone. But I haven't shown or told anybody on my channel yet what I traded my Hydrotrack for, but uh, this is it right here. SS15, which were only made in 1972. What did you call this one? Joey. Joey. So this was Alex's first tractor, if I'm not mistaken, and he's had it for quite a few first years. Original. First original tractor. Yeah, my first purse was 69, my second was a 68, but those were like mud mowers. This right. is my first like... Original, mud not mud molested mud. tractor, so... Yeah, this is like the start of the collection. This is what started it. And if you guys know my channel at all, this is the condition I like them in. Crusty, rusty, original, you know, barn find, if you will. So, 1972, SS15, and uh, it's going to be a cool addition to the channel. I haven't had one of these, so I've had a 14, or I've had two 14s and a 15. Believe it or not, I actually had a Hydrotrack 14. That's cool. um, That's rare, right? I haven't had an SS15 or a Briggs machine in a long time, and the main reason is, why, why don't we like these machines? Uh, the carburetor. You're right, the carburetors. So. Beat as much as people hate owning carburetors or the, you know, the, the Marvel Shebler owning carburetors, the square ones, these are worse, in my opinion, because the owning ones I can fix in like an hour and get it running perfectly. These guys, every time I take them apart, they leak or I bend the, the uh, main jet or something like that. So there is kind of a, there's a bit of a, a knowledge transfer that you need to know when you have these because the main jet goes all the way up through the bowl into the main body of the carburetor. And if you don't take it out correctly, you'll damage it, and they're hard to get. You can buy Chinese carbs for these, but they're probably the worst copy of a carb out of anything I've ever seen because they're a little bit complicated. So um, I know this one does need some carb work. I'm hoping I can fix it, and if not, I'm hoping that since the last time I bought a Chinese Briggs carb, which was probably about 10 years ago, that they've come a little ways, but we'll see. I think I save tractors.com uh, Henry that's up in Maine. I think he resells Briggs carbs for these that are probably a little bit better than the Chinese ones, but I don't know where he sources them from. Maybe he goes through them. I'm not sure. So we'll have to check that out. But yeah, this is the 72 SS15 that I'm trading for this Hydrotrack that you've seen in the last couple of videos. So uh, Alex was nice enough to come down here um, and believe it or not. So the story behind the cab that I just bought, uh, I went and picked it up yesterday. It? Yeah. Guys, comment down below. Make him put it on there. It would be sweet. Yeah, he wants me to put the cab on this. Well, but the, I mean, the, in the manual it shows... Mm -hmm. Yeah, 70, 71, 72, something like that. Um, but the cab I bought yesterday, uh, I guess Alex had already made a deal with the guy to buy it. And yeah, funny story, alert, yeah. Un, unbeknownst to me, um, the guy, when I showed up, I said, oh, thank you for holding it for me. I hate it when somebody sells something out from under me. And he's like, oh, yeah, no problem, no problem. I would never do that. Come to find out, um, Alex was, I was supposed to pick it up today. Yeah, yeah. supposed to, he was supposed to leave my house and drive out to Charlton, Mass, and pick up the cab. Yeah. And I texted him last night and said, "Hey, did you see that cab in Charlton, Mass?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'm buying it." And I'm like, "Oh, it's I just back, bought it yeah, it's in the back, <laughs> in the of, my back of my truck." So, yeah. uh, yeah, I I feel bad, but at least now I have the manual, the only yes. known manual for those that I've ever seen that I'm gonna. Yeah. That's the only reason I was gonna buy it. I mean, I already had one. I didn't need it, but that manual is worth the price. So. Yeah. So for me, I'm going to scan the manual so everybody can enjoy it and have it. I'm glad I, you got it, though, because you, you'll do that. Well, I mean, I'm glad I, 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 I got it, too. Yeah. You know, if I was unscrupulous, I would take the manual and scan it yeah. and then sell copies of yeah. it or sell the original one for, like, what I paid for the cab, which I would yeah. never do, but yeah. only if I really needed money. I mean, there's people out there that do it every day. So. Yeah, there are. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> I do <agree. laughs> <laughs> No, this is sick. I'm, it's in the right hands. So why why is the deck on the trailer? Did you go pick, pick that up before no, you no, came that here? Comes with it. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. All right. So now you're definitely going to keep the nose because. Well, over here, this is why. So this is the guy that I got it from. The roll pin came out of this. So he had a chain, and these are your mowing heights. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Well, good thing I have extra fenders. Yeah. So. That's how he... You, you know, I might just leave it like that because the more ghetto, the more better, yeah. right? That's how... He said he mowed his lawn every day with this thing. So... Anyway, so yeah. yeah. Oh, that makes I me... I you to have it. I well, it. It's all original, too. I appreciate that. So yeah. for that, you're going to keep that nose, and if you choose to use it or put it on one of your machines that you sell... 
because honestly, I always tell people I don't I don't want people to feel like I take advantage of them when I sell stuff to them. And my original intent was because this nose cone is not broken and I could put it on another machine and sell it. I was going to keep this nose cone and lower grill. But honestly, he's got machines that don't have hoods or grills on them. If he wants to sell those, he can stick this on one of those and put an original 68 grill back on this. And now I have another mower deck, which is great because I'm always saying I need extras. Oh, yeah, true. So I, you're, I'm helping you get a new you're saving computer. Your money. I'm saving you money and helping your channel stay as good as it is. one front mower deck mount on that i saw that but uh i have like eight at home so the challenge with those the hydro frame is different so you gave the, me one off of a hydro did i yeah the rear one yeah oh good yeah so i have a whole so the front one is the same you just need yeah. to put the pto lever on because that one was taken off I'll be the camera guy. I have one spare tank. <laughs> I think so. I think I have one too that I'll need. I showed it in, the, in my video the other day. There we go. Oh, that looks really good. Looks really good. So yeah, yeah. Check, check me out. Mainly media. I'm sure he'll put it here somewhere. His content is way better than mine. You should definitely go check him out. Alex, mainly media with these things is the caps are a weird size so like almost no cap fits that one kind of fits we want to see how hard it is to rope start a brakes i don't know if it will start oh so you sell me a tr trade me a tractor that doesn't run <laughs> yeah pretty much That's a, I, let's try i'm it. perfectly fine with that let's try it. Let's try it. i can go get a battery i just it's that the car it will run but it's like the carburetor i don't know acts funny well, it's the fuel pump is bypassed, that's why it doesn't work. Because these pretty much need fuel pumps. Yeah. Well, this so isn't on here either very well. Yeah, we're not going to run it then. Yeah. It has two fuel shutoffs too, did you notice that? Yeah, one here and one, one here. here and one here, and they both work. Yeah, this is somewhere on the side. That's supposed to, so one of these is the pulse, that's the pulse. This one probably goes to the tank, and this one probably goes to the car or something. Oh, I bypassed it because it ran better without it. Oh, so really? maybe that's wrong. Oh, I'm back. Yeah. You do everything top notch here on the Yes, very legit over here. Yeah, if you bring like a pair of dikes or something, we can shorten the fuel hose. Because you got plenty of room. I have mic setups here. And you can tell he's talking right now. <laughs> talking to the camera or he's talking to himself. He's doing something that's funny. Behind the scenes, mainly media. Check me out. But it's been a great, great tractor. I literally was just mowing with it uh, a couple seasons ago. So, and this is all we were doing was mowing with it. So, was it on video? All right. So, let's see if this thing starts. I don't have the battery bolts completely tight. I just finger tightened them. So, oh, I gotta turn the fuel on too. Yeah. I could have done that before I funk, funk, funk it. That's all it has been doing. Oh, great. Maybe, did you know that oh, the, there you go. did you know I that the fuel the... line was split? Yes. Oh. Yeah, no, I was messing with the carburetor. I had a whole video that I don't think I really. It does turn over nice and easy. You want to, you want to hold your finger on it? Yeah.
No, I can smell the gas. It's probably, is it pouring out of the carb? It is, right? Yeah. So that's the problem with brakes. The floats get stuck and they just flood. Oops, hey, it runs. Leave that one open and... No, I'm still tickle pink. Like, I, these don't show up very often for sale and... They're running out of it. Well, I turned this one off and left that one on. I just want to see if it pops off. It's got so much, it's just yeah. That's tripping. what was wrong with it then. And that's what's wrong with every Briggs I've ever owned, the carburetors. But it did start and run, so if I let it sit for a while, it'll probably start up again once all the gas strains out of the, the bottom of the bolt. These though, and again, another, um, another tip for anybody that has either a Briggs or a Tecumseh or a Kohler that has points on it that has an internal coil. What I typically do with these is yeah, a little bit. What I typically do with these is, as long as the points are good, which this one I know the points are good because it started and ran, I take the factory ignition coil out from under the, the housing on this, and because this is an electric start tractor, I will actually get a separate uh, canister coil from a Kohler and mount it up in front of the grill on this thing, and you got to wire 12 volts to it, and then the negative side of that goes down to the points, and then you just have a single spark plug wire and a condenser on that coil. And the reason I like doing that is because you get a much harder, hotter, cleaner spark that fires a lot quicker because you're not reliant on the flywheel magnets to charge the coil and stuff. I mean, this stuff is, what, 50 years old now? So it does tend to get a little bit worn out after 50 years. So if you can replace some of the ignition components with more common um, stuff that's, you know, modern, it ends up helping out a lot. So that's what I'm going to do to this on my channel uh, eventually. But for now... It does run, it starts, and I'm happy about that. So now we added another SS15 to the stable. And we're gonna try to convince you to get the Roper RT13 too. You, we, we are. Mm -hmm. I didn't need one of those. Cause you need a computer still, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> yes, but not right away. I, I could, right now um, it's all apart and it needs that thing. The coil. There. Yeah. So I could take the coil off of this and put it on that and it would probably run. And sell it to you or, super cheap, less than you paid the cab. Or, or convert that to uh, external coil as well. Well, if I had known that, I mean, you couldn't fit two on your trailer? No, mm -hmm. you couldn't. No. Maybe if you left Another the day. gate down. Put skateboard wheels on the gate and leave it on the gate. There you go, yeah. It'll make it a, what, two hundred and fifty miles? You know the tow trucks with the dollies? Yeah, just, just get a tow truck dolly. Pull. You could do that. No, don't do that. Yeah, don't. Cool. Well, that'll be in the future, right? Yeah. Well, I'm Roper super RT happy. RT-13 man. Awesome. I got it off, that guy, I got it off the original. Yeah. His father died, and then he didn't want it. Yeah. And then he bought it brand new. So nice. Yeah. Yeah, comment down below. Make sure that happens. <laughs>
runs so good. Except for the carb issue, and right now I'm able to keep it running by just cracking open the fuel shut off. Where can I shove this deck? It only needs to go in that corner. I have to take a bunch of stuff out to get it in there. It might descend out right here for now. Well, what was simply doing a trade this morning is now turned into one of those, I gotta like take every tractor out to put stuff back in the garage. And to be perfectly honest, I never put my stuff from Pennsylvania Plow Day back where it needed to go. So now I took a bunch of tractors out of the corner. I got to put the new mower deck from Alex over there in the corner. I got to take all of my moldboard plows and stuff, put over there in the corner to get them out of the way and move a few things around. And my upcoming next few videos are hopefully going to be fixing up stuff on tractors that I know has been wrong for a while. The Mongrel 3, I'm going to swap the rear end because it leaks oil and that carburetor needs to be gone through again because the float's stuck. Um, Emma's tractor, I need to replace the carburetor on. This guy needs a little bit of tinkering. This is a 69 Suburban 12 that I got in Father's Day a couple years ago. The C&B Special, I have to fix the uh, decompression lever release spring. That's messed up. The uh, SS18... This is gonna get, actually I think that's an 18.6. This one, I have to pull the loader off of it. I wanna stick it on a different tractor and I need to go through the carburetor and stuff on this guy. So that one's gonna be another project. The 16T needs the valves adjusted on it, I think. It doesn't run quite right. Uh, this guy's always fine. This 68, I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do with yet. I think I'm gonna put it back together um, with a different grill and stuff. This guy works fine, I just never use it. I need to get it out again. That's an all original tractor. I think that's a 70, I can never remember if it's a 73 or a 74, but that one's all original. And then back over here, the SS18, I gotta finish putting it back together. And that 68 Suburban 12 that's there is getting a diesel that's over on my bench. So lots of stuff. I'm gonna try to start picking away at my projects. I got that pressure washer I gotta get running. And if it doesn't, the pressure washer pump doesn't work, I'm pulling the motor off because that's an 11 horse Honda. That's a great motor. So I'm gonna start picking away at my projects. I gotta change the rear end in the D10S too. That pops out a second. So I think that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, lots of stuff always going on over here at Cranky Motorsports. Thanks all for joining. And again, stay tuned for more upcoming videos where hopefully I can finally get some of these projects done and get some free time where I can actually just enjoy my tractors. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.